Okay guys, so welcome back to the implementation and time complexity discussion video of different devices. Now, the time complexity discussion is actually very important for this question. So let us do it then, okay? So I have already taken the input here, T. Uh, what we have to find is, uh, we have to find P, which is actually smallest prime greater than equals to d plus one, right? So this next prime function, I've implemented it. So we'll implement it together. Uh, what it returns is it returns smallest prime greater than equals to x, right? So uh, first you have to find p, uh, then you have to find q. What is q? Uh, q is the smallest prime greater than equals to p plus t, right? So the next prime, uh, whatever argument you give it, it's gonna return the smallest prime greater than equals to that argument, fine? So once you have find p and q, our answer is pretty simple. Our answer is simply a minimum of p cube P into P into P and uh, P into Q because these are the possible candidates for A, right? And that is one thing uh, since uh, we have taken integer inputs here, uh, there is a chance that uh, this can uh, cause integer overflow. So maybe you can just uh, multiply them by one LL to avoid that. Similarly, you can also multiply this by one LL, right? Uh, because P and Q can be quite large, right? And it can cause integer overflow. Now let's just implement this next prime function. So what this next prime function does is uh, it returns the smallest prime greater than equals to x. In other words, uh, we start from a number equal to x because this can very well be the smallest possible prime, right? So d plus one can very well be the smallest prime, right? So start from that number and uh, goes, uh, like there's an exit condition here. Uh, I'm gonna exit whenever this num is found to be a prime, right? So it handles the case where num, where the smallest prime is actually x itself. So here, uh, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna check whether this number is prime or not. If this number is gonna is going to be prime, I'm just gonna return this number. That's what it's gonna do. And uh, yeah, and in the end, yeah, you can return minus one here, but you are never gonna come here because uh, uh, you will uh, return this number whenever uh, a prime number is found, right? So there is no exit condition for this for loop. I'm gonna start from X and I'm gonna keep incrementing this number until I have found a number with this prime, all right? Now all that remains is um, implementing this is prime function. Now, how should you implement it? Uh, turns out uh, in this question, uh, the constraints are such that uh, you can simply implement uh, order of uh, root n solution. So I guess this you already know, uh, like, there's a simple uh, fundamental thing, how to check whether a number is prime or not. What you effectively do is you, you go from numbers from two till root n and check whether this number is divisible by that uh, guy or not, right? Because uh, it directly comes with the fact that the way factors are distributed, uh, uh, there will be at least one factor less than equals to root n, right? So this is like the fundamental law of prime numbers. So we'll discuss more about the constraints uh, during the time complexity discussion. But for now, you will have to believe me that uh, if you just implement this prime as a root n uh, space solution, it will work. It will not cause TLE, okay? So what is the root n based solution? Um, you just start from i equals to two and you go till i is less than equals to root n. Or in other words, i into i is less than equals to num. A plus plus. So you should always avoid uh, like the functions uh, which return double value. I know there is a SQRT function in the math library, but you should avoid it because it returns a double. Instead, you should prefer checks like this. I into I less than equals to num. Okay. So you just have to check here if uh, num mod I is actually equal to zero. If this is the case, you have to return false, right? This number is not prime. But if you have, if you are here, um, that is no number divides from two till root n this num, then this number is a prime, right? Because if number is not prime, then at least one of the factor uh, apart from one uh, will lie in this range, like will be less than equals to root n. Fine, so that is is prime function. Uh, this next prime uh, is gonna use the is prime function to return the smallest prime greater than equals to x and uh, we'll get an answer then. Uh, let me just quickly run it. Yeah, so my sublime did crash because I'm stupid and <laughs> I wrote false again here. This should be true, right? So if no number from two to root n is dividing num, then it is prime, right? So yeah, this should be true. And yeah, this all seems fine. Uh, let me just quickly run it now. 
yeah it seems to be working uh, let me just quickly submit it so yeah it did got submitted now let us see uh, the time complexity analysis and uh, be hundred percent sure why this didn't give you a TLE because at first uh, it might uh, look that you have to use Siva of Eratosthenes, but it was not required. You could just get away by using order of root and uh, primality check. So yeah, uh, more on that in the time complexity analysis. Okay guys, so let's just analyze the time complexity here. So we know for the fact that the maximum value of t is 10 power 3 and for d is 10 power 4 that you can see on the right. Now, what will be the time complexity of our code? Mm, it will be actually equal to uh, t into what is the time complexity of like two times the time complexity of this next prime function right but for brevity you can ignore this too and time complexity will be t into next prime because like constant factor don't change anything as empirically right so t into what is the time complexity of this next prime function now look at the next prime function what does it what does it do now at the surface it might look like uh, it is going for infinite number of times but it is not it only goes till it encounters the next prime function right so I don't know if you know this, uh, but you are going to know just now that uh, the distance between uh, nth prime and uh, n plus 1th prime uh, is actually nearly equal to natural log of log n. In other words, um, if you have nth prime and if you want to go to n plus 1th prime, you will not consume uh, more than around log n number of operations. So it is a very good thing, right? So what you are after is you are going to enter this next prime. When you're looking for d plus like smallest prime greater than equals to d plus 1 or smallest prime greater than equals to p plus d in other words in the like of course this won't happen but uh, in the worst case you are looking after uh, you can say d plus 1th prime and uh, this p plus d -th prime of course it won't be the case because uh, you won't be like having d plus 1 prime numbers from 1 to d plus 1 but i'm just trying to bound it right so what I'm trying to say here is, um, in the worst case, when you enter d plus 1 here, what you're looking after is you're looking after d plus 1 prime, right? But all in all, what I'm trying to say here is, uh, even if you're looking for d plus 1 prime, and d plus d will be also some sort of multiple of, uh, like some number after d plus 1 plus log d plus 1, right? Not more than that. It won't be more than that. That's what I'm trying to say. In other words, um, the number of iterations for this next prime, the outer loop, outer loop in the worst case uh, can be log base e or what is the worst possible value the log base b of d right around d ish so this will be very less than this but the log d so this d is what uh, it's actually 1e4 right so this loop uh, will run for around uh, log base e 10 power 4 so what is it it actually turns out to be 9.2 right even if you want to let's say double it so i'm just trying to find the upper bound here so for for p plus d it will be log base e of let's just double it down okay 2 into 10 power 4 so what will be in that in this case so it will be 9.9 .9 something or let's just call it 10 only so let's just call this x to be 10 that is number of times this next prime runs i hope you got it so what i'm trying to do here is this loop won't run more than log d number of times that is uh, the distance between uh, d plus 1th prime right that's what i'm trying to do here d d and d plus 1th prime that's what i'm trying to do okay so this loop won't run more than 10 number of times and for uh, 10 number of times this is prime function is getting called right so this is prime function what is the complexity here the complexity of this prime function is uh, root n root of num so what is the worst possible value of num here the worst possible value of num will be actually d again 10 power 4 right the worst possible value let me just call this thing as y uh, will be root of 10 power 4 right so the root of 10 power 4 is what it's actually 100 right under root 10 power 4 okay so all in all what is the time complexity of next prime the time complexity of next prime will be actually equal to 1000 right and what is the total time complexity then? Uh, since you already know t is 10 power 3, your time, total time complexity is t into x into y, which is actually equal to around, what is this? this is 1 million, right? So some factor of uh, 1 e 6, and this actually works, right? So yeah, I guess uh, 
that's the time complexity so 1 is 6 of course works the solution that we implemented and uh, our solution works perfectly fine and yeah uh, that's that um, for this video then i'll see you in the next one